The idea behind Audio Wave is to create a decentralized audio environment where you have any number of speakers that are all sort of semi-autonomous, they do their own thing, yet they can receive signals from a central source. And the idea is we can then place audio spatially in any environment. What's important and what's conceptually different about it is the fact it's, it's sound imagined as a shared volumetric experience as opposed to an individual experience of sound. And we think of it as kind of a, a, a network or collective of kind of self-aware pixels. So in conventional spatial audio reproduction systems like cinemas, 5.1, 7.1, Atmos surround, the listener is kind of within a, a circle or a dome of speakers. However, with Audio Wave, each single bloom is a speaker in itself. And so it allows sounds to swarm around and amongst the listener rather than just enveloping them. So it completely redefines the way in which we treat sound in space. It has a range of applications. I mean, it can be used in theater, it can be used in retail spaces. I think it could be used as a real-time sort of next-generation DJ tool where you're actually creating spatial atmospheres, sonic atmospheres, and um, ambient soundscapes on the fly in real time. So our prototype is an augmented reality application that allows people to share stories from the past and see historic places and artefacts from points of view which they wouldn't normally engage with. We're using augmented reality so that you can use the app to look at an object, uh, like we're using the Ghani staff, and from there it will trigger a narrative experience. Rather than recommend um, you narratives in the way that Netflix recommends you films, uh, it's going to re recommend you things that don't reinforce your current bias. So it's going to recommend you things from alternative points of view and alternative groups of people. Museums already try and tell complicated narratives around uh, artefacts and places. There's so much research that goes into all of this stuff. But within an exhibition space, there's not necessarily enough words, we can't get enough words on the walls to explain the complexity of some of these narratives. I'm really interested in how uh, immersive technologies can have an impact in museums specifically, but also the cultural sector beyond the exhibition. How can we apply immersive technologies through these kind of game engines to museums in such a way that they actually can change the way that we kind of see the collection, that can change the way that we tell stories and have some kind of lasting impact on the curatorial practice of the museum. So Earth Songs is a playful and creative mixed reality experience designed for the Magic Leap One headset. The Magic Leap headset is what's described as mixed reality. It's also described as spatial computing. But in, in essence, you have a headset on your head and you can see through it. So you can see the space that you're actually in. And in that space that you're in, through the headset, objects are augmented into the real world. So you're beginning as a a player, which is also a new word because it's not an audience, you're a player. So as the player you're beginning to get a sense that you're entering into a new dimension, maybe a playful one, certainly a spatialized audio uh, dimension. And I hope that you're beginning to be taken into a magical world. Level one will be the Papua New Guinea rainforest, which will be represented by beguiling visual motifs that represent the calls of various birds from that habitat and they will appear from behind you again, so you'll get a sense of the spatialized audio. And then in front of you, you will be presented with a suite of these beautiful images created by the creative technologist All Seeing Eye. And each of these images will represent the bird. And from that point, really, you can then play with these things. You can pick them up and place them into the corner of the uh, ceiling. Again, because the headsets map to your room, it knows there's a table there or a chair there. You can place them underneath a table and the sound that you'll hear will sound as if that bird is underneath the table. It's an extraordinary technology. Earth Songs is for everybody. 
I'm hoping that actually uh, through Earth Songs and through focusing on the sound in nature that actually people will open their ears to the natural world and um, connect with the natural world in a different and um, intuitive way. I'm Katie Good, Creative Director of Triangle Pixels, and our prototype project is to create a series of tools that will allow immersive content to be made faster, cheaper, and more accessible. Basically, the way it works is that it sort of detects the space that you're actually in and pushes everything to the edges and basically like starts fitting in jigsaw puzzle pieces to whatever space you have, and also then starts mixing out the ones that maybe you can't actually do. So for example, if you're in a wheelchair, you might not be able to duck or crawl around very fast. So we would take out that content for your game. What was interesting there, you could like, if you can't crawl, you could change it, or if you could just duck, you could change that sort of thing. And I think that's really good because it's making it more accessible to people. Obviously, for the type of impact that we're hoping for us, uh, we hope that it's going to keep us like going for a long time, you know, there's a lot of work that can come from this. But for others, ultimately, if we can go to an event and if anybody can turn up at that event and queue and be able to play, that would be awesome. Like turning away people because your game can't support them, it would be such a horrible feeling. We just don't want to be able to do that. So for someone to feel like an awesome James Bond-like agent, even though they might have just something that's different about them, that would be amazing. The original question was what happens to art when you centre accessibility as an artistic um, choice rather than a compromise? A tactile is a, a floor-based sound system effectively. Uh, where you've got uh, the vibrations which are emanating from the floor instead of from uh, speakers. If you think of subfloor, you think of dance floors, whereas what we're trying to build is something that could be used for theatre or dance and opera. There are two different ways that we can actually experience sound. Uh, one of them is through obviously hearing it through our ears, but a lot of the experience of sound is through our bodies actually feeling it. And a lot of those frequencies are in the what's known as infrasonic range, and that's below 20 hertz, stuff that our ears just can't pick up. And that's where we really get a visceral sensation for what's going on in, around us. For me, it's about trying to find a place where and an environment as much as possible where you can seamlessly integrate with people. And so I think it's about an environment that is intrinsically places accessibility as a value that we should all aspire to rather than a inconvenience or an obstacle or a practical solution. The Real Time Stage Maker is a tool which is designed to aid creative collaboration in making VR. It's got an interface that's split. One person works on the desktop PC or laptop that the VR headset's tethered to. The other one's in VR and they have a suite of tools that lets them really effectively create things together. The idea is that the tool will enable two creatives to be in the same space, one in a VR headset, one outside, and talk about what they want the space to look like, what they want the experience to feel like, but be able to see what that's going to actually look like at the same time. I see it like as an ability to democratise kind of the, the Unity platform. Instead of painting with your toes, we hope to be able to make you feel like you're painting with your fingers again. The way the languages go and the way programming goes, you know, it's all built on previous kind of ingenious kind of solutions and so hopefully ours is just helping all of those come together a little bit more. So what is exciting about Real Time Stage Maker is that it really lowers the barrier to entry of people who want to make VR. Because the startup cost to kind of make a, a grey box or like a, something which is a prototype is so big, then you've got like a really limited pool of people who can kind of enter the field. 
And the truth is, VR gets interesting when people are coming to it from a theatre background or from a music background. And so really what we think it's, it can do is not only make the process kind of more creative and more playful, but also bring other sectors and um, non-technical people. You don't need to be working alongside a coder to be able to come up with something which represents what you want to make. Baby BSL Where is the Bird is aimed at the hearing parents of deaf or hearing children and anybody who wants to learn British Sign Language. By using sign language with your child before they can speak, you can increase communication but also decrease the amount of frustration. The technology we're using is essentially augmented reality and mixed media reality. The printed page has a series of illustrations that are triggers and these are then activated by a smartphone. It's also compatible with fabrics, stickers, badges, so playful interfaces that parents will use every day. The illustrations are designed around the concept of a walk in the park. We have a plane, we have a bird. So a parent, for example, can have the buggy book and their smartphone will, will scan over the top. That bird will then spring to life and also share a video of how to make that sign in sign language. Before you sign, make sure you have direct eye contact. This is particularly important for deaf children. Don't worry about getting the sign exactly right. Signs are more expressive than words. For example, the sign for plane can be moved around in space to visualise how it's flying. Use signs as often as you can. The more you practice, the more rewarding signing will be. Don't be disheartened if your baby takes time to sign back. They'll enjoy playing with you and will understand you long before they can make the signs themselves. Baby Sign Language is an established but little known um, resource for parents to be communicating with people, children. So for us, we'd be really excited when this has become a much more familiar way of interacting with children for families. So my prototype project has several different, different aspects to it, but ultimately it's about using technologies to validate this Movement and Falls program as a way to build strength and to stop older people and vulnerable people falling. So we're using motion capture here in, in camera to fully capture the, the bodies of three participants in their mid-70s as they're doing my program so that we can then use biomechanics to measure the change that happens over a six-week period. And we're using accelerometers to capture movement in three planes and also rotation in three planes as a gyroscope to capture movement on participants in Plymouth. I have three different groups there. And then we're going to map that data onto the data from Fitbits from participants to see if there's a correlation with increased activity in a session and a change in heart rate, change in movement, change in activity outside of sessions, uh, which is amazing and I think possibly one of the first times anyone has ever done this, with, certainly with older people and falls prevention. So much of this older population we work with are, are of the opinion that they're, they're not kind of, society doesn't like them anymore, doesn't want them, they have no value, um, they're dying, they they're, can't get any better at anything. And this experience of, that we've seen with our participants with this program is, that's not true. The, the brain is plastic, the body is plastic, you can get stronger, even if you might be 90, you can still build strength. Your brain, you can learn new things, you can learn new movements, you can learn new ideas about yourself, and by doing so, learn that you are actually a valuable member of the world.